sitting on the, on the metal and there was too much weight too much weight on the board and the board started started dragging See, broke this board broke that board to be in the 
the middle, right? Yeah. That has to come here. And the tires, the tires will be here. I'm just waiting, waiting for that Zeneborgen to get out of the way so I can I can move my truck so that this poor guy can. tablet is dead it, it got overheated and it says charging was stopped she doesn't want to charge anyway maybe it'll it'll cool down a little bit so we have some time a couple of minutes so that's where that's where all the action was taking place right so the scrap yard where I'm delivering basically that's the shop is in this building over there on uh, where all those cars are parked not this part but basically the other side of the building is my consignee and he says the own property on both sides he says oh don't oh, yeah I see it's over there in the in the distance I see the green Zenniborgen working there yeah, so the yard is over there. He says it's huge. It covers the entire area here, but in the back. And so he says, don't worry about it. So I unhooked, uh, you know, I figured it would be easier to uh, um, to take the Jeep first, right? And so I, I unhooked the Jeep. I dropped the trailer on the ground and then I backed. I went in there and then I just backed the Jeep here, dropped it and then came back. And then of course, because I have a long neck, I cannot use uh, I cannot use the standard standard support legs, right? That's the whole point. The whole point of these, see, of these legs, right? They're supposed to go here to support the neck, so you can take it away, right? But because I didn't want to disconnect the neck, like I'm tired of the flipping this thing, so I just took the I took this timber. And I did it before many times, like this big timber. When you drop the suspension, it fits right in here. And when you drop the trailer, it's kind of like barely, I don't know, half an inch of the ground, slightly touching, right? And then you move away, reinflate the suspension, and this thing just is in the air, just sitting on that timber. And so I took the neck off, right? And then we started unloading, and it's funny how, you know, I was expecting... I was really kind of like 
cringing you know internally that i would see some damage over here because that boom was so heavy and but i put you see not even bent i but i put a bunch of um you know those uh, conveyor belts in here right and then i made sure i put that other chain uh where was it i think in in uh, south carolina so i didn't i didn't go a lot without that chain so there was another chain supporting the boom and so the weight was going in here um, but you see everything looks good over here so i was really concerned about this because that boom was massive so i was concerned about that nothing happened but what i didn't even suspect would happen did happen right because one wheel you see like this right that machine had two wheels but they were narrow and so this one was a bit off this way and so only this thing was on this uh, board and as the guy started driving well first of all when he was even stationary i noticed that he broken these boards like these were broken when the machine was even stationary because too much weight was here so like this is of course it's 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 metal nothing gonna happen here i don't think i just double check Mm -hmm. looks good except that and so i said hey give push some gas you know push on the go pedal you have to get out of here and he went out of here and right away he broke the second one and then he broke that one so that's what we have but you know this is uh, the metal is not damaged so this is, of course looks ugly but it's it looks worse than it is because these were short boards you see this you see this the bolts are here and is that a bolt yeah i see that's why they broke because they were short well no this one is long but it's very narrow but yeah this is very thick wood and this is hard wood imagine but there's nothing underneath right so that which means that you cannot just put crazy weight in here you know it has to be supported on these beams so these machines can be really dangerous you know in this in this regard i prefer uh tracked machinery because when it's a track you know that it's the weight spreads out but when this crazy thing you know hundred thousand pounds on four wheels on one axle you know but the most important part the integrity of the trailer is not compromised the metal is good this is just wood and so i already called uh, my shop over there where i take my truck for repair i said can you guys fix a broken a broken floor in the trailer and they said yeah sure just when you when do you want to stop by i said well how about tomorrow i'm still in montreal i checked the load board there's nothing here screw this i never get lucky out of montreal and plus i'm tired i want to get it's been a long and stressful trip you know i probably crossed under 5,000 bridges each time looking in the mirror like this even though i knew that it was 1310 overall but still you know like can be stressful and so then yeah then they brought that zenniborgen the big machine picked it up boom swirled in here and of course i made sure you know one thing i forgot remember i had trouble with the uh, airbags right so now now i never forget to do this you have to uh, tighten the chains and for some reason GC went cheap on me they only gave me chains on one side but I guess that's that's okay see like this side is not supported but this you know, on my like everywhere else on the trailer there's chains on both sides so basically you tighten these when the suspension is dropped you tighten them and then when they lift it so the entire axle is not dragging down the airbags because all the weight sits on the chains very important so never let people lift your trailer or a jeep or a stinger with tires without tightening these chains okay man this looks so bad you know <laughs> what did you guys do but at least at least the guys were very happy to see me everybody was very excited i said you guys look like you've been waiting for this machine for a long time he says yeah i said well that's why i guess the customer paid me good money to go down there to charleston yeah, you see in the distance over there so they have one yard in there they have another yard in there 
and it's all scrap metal so this new machine I'm guessing they have the attachment because I brought it without the attachment so because without the attachment they just the paperweight so as soon as they hook up the attachment they can start moving scrap metal around and so probably like in a week or so that machine is not gonna look brand new anymore but it'll be making them a lot of money so they said they have about five or six of these green Zenneboggen machines and so this is I think this is their second uh, Fuchs machine and uh, I was happy to help the guy the guy, the same guy who operates the Zenny Borgen and the wheel loader, he was driving this. And I see he was uh, hesitating. Not sure, not sure which button to press. I said, hey, you want some help over there? He said, yeah, okay. So I climbed in there and helped him. I said, okay, push this to unlock the proximity alert for hydraulics. If you wanna, you know, tighten your boom and stick real close together, push this for hydraulics and uh, how do you steer i said you steer with these and he says yeah they had the zenneborgen like the early models they have a steering wheel but he says the late models all come with the same bs with these two push pull no push type of switches for the for the wheels i don't know why they do that it doesn't look very uh, operator friendly you know and i get up at like five o'clock today because my pilot was waiting for me at the uh, quebec ontario line and i didn't make it to quebec border yesterday because I, I got tied up with this money problems trying to send money to russia to buy that accordion i'll upload that video uh today it's like one adventure after another all my accounts were blocked because they thought there was something suspicious going on i said guys i'm just trying to send money to russia you know what's but russia is a hot item right now in a bad way so because of that hacking attack nothing to russia goes through but only this morning i send money to my brother so he can pay to get that accordion to me and when you're sending it to your you know to your blood to your brother or mother or father they okay with it but try to send it to a stranger that you never sent before send money to before and you never met him in your life uh how did you meet uh did, did you see this person in person how long i do you know each other like i went i went through this bs nazi style interrogation with western union money graham declined my bank declined i'm telling you like it was very frustrating so yesterday i only started driving like three o'clock from cambridge and it's a solid six hour drive and so i shut down at uh at a big huge huge rest area about 70 kilometers or 45 miles away from the quebec line and so I got up at 5.15, which I know, you know, I usually need 45 minutes before I start driving. So I figured, okay, it's 70 kilometers, 70 clicks, so let's say an hour. So I better start driving at 6. In order to start driving at 6, I have to get up at 5.15. And that's what I did. I got up at 5.15. And I said, okay, just like my brother said, he says, never send money to Russia uh, when it's when it's night over there or you know because russia is not, they don't recognize uh daylight savings time so you before it was eight hour difference like russia is forward so if it's uh for example now it's 11 o'clock here that means that back in winter it would have been 11 plus 8 uh it would be 7 p.m but now because we switched uh, our time to daytime right what is it winter time anyway so they don't do that anymore so now in the summer the difference is seven hours and so if i try to if i try to send money right now 11 plus 7 is 1800 right or 6 p.m uh typically that means that the money would be stuck at least for one more day right and so on advice from my brother i i send it six o'clock my time 
So six o'clock my time, that's six plus one, that's 1 p.m. in Russia. And now already by the end of the day, I check the status. Uh, first it said in progress, in progress, and that's usually when they can cancel it if they don't like it, you know. It, they, they deem it suspicious, but I, I'm sending money to my brother. I sent him money many times before, everything, but you know, small amounts. And so they know it's my brother same last name except his last name is spelled without the the letter t as in tom right mine is d-r-a-t-c-h-e-v his last name is d-r-a-c-h-e-v which is funny but it's because uh after i left russia the uh ministry of foreign affairs or state department as it's called in the u.s right but it's in russia it's ministry of foreign affairs they changed the alphabet the like the table of corresponding letters whereas before they used French like you know they take a Russian letter and there was a corresponding combination of letters or a letter from French and so in French the sound ch drachev or drachov in Russian ch is tch right and then after I left about one or two years after that they changed that and now the official language became English in all their documents and so that table they changed the characters and symbols from French to English and in English ch is ch and that's how my brother is d-r-a-c-h-e-v and I'm d-r-a-t-c-h-e-v <laughs> we're just another crazy thing about uh, Russia is nothing is predictable everything is unpredictable you have 10 Fridays in one week you know rules change all the time and like I mentioned in the video that I'm gonna post on my second channel it's one problem after another if you try to buy something from Russia and you located in the States or Canada your visa does not work nothing works unless you know somebody in there in a circle that has rubles if you have rubles you're king you don't have rubles you're nothing 